An independent documentary filmmaker is pursuing stories that explore wrongful convictions in the name of protecting the social order. Her latest project is a deep dive into the American criminal justice system, and it's also capturing the attention of a worldwide audience. Director and filmmaker Gia Wirtz is with us live to tell us about conviction. Welcome to the show, Gia. Thanks for having me, Aubrey. First of all, I want to know what drew you to investigate wrongful convictions? <laughs> Gia, can you hear me? I sure can. Can you hear me? Uh, we lost you for a second, but tell us why did you start to pursue this subject matter, wrongful convictions? Oh, you know, I was really passionate about this cause for a long time in my, you know, when I was 19 or 20, I read this book by Reuben Carter called The 16th Round, which the movie The Hurricane is based on, that Denzel Washington film. And that just really got me uh, hooked on th this cause and I felt really passionate about it. And then fast forward to around 2015, the Serial podcast came out and I heard that story about the subject of the podcast Adnan and I believed in his innocence and that really reinvigorated this passion I had for doing something for this cause and that's kind of what got me on this path. Wow, so you have a, your debut documentary, it's called Conviction, and you've actually found a lot of success on the festival circuit. You've won a few awards, and now it's being shared with a larger audience on Amazon Prime. Tell us a little bit more about Conviction. Yeah, sure. Conviction is a story of uh, Jeffrey Deskovic. He was a 16-year-old kid in Peekskill, New York, uh, in high school, and unfortunately in a very safe town where there wasn't very much crime at all for decades, there was a rape and murder, and the girl that was killed was a classmate of Jeff's. Now, he didn't know her very well. She was an acquaintance. But what ended up happening is the detectives came and questioned students at the school. And some of the students happened to mention that Jeff was a quiet kid and reserved and to talk to him. And just that little bit of information turned the detective's attention onto Jeff. Oh, and wow. then, of course, you know, he went on to be wrongfully convicted of the crime. Oh, wow. So there's quite a lot probably to dig into his story and how that all happened. And I understand there's a Sacramento tie-in. There is. So while Jeff was incarcerated, uh, you know, of course, it was he was in a maximum security male prison as a 16 year old, and it was really hard for him. And he thought about and contemplated and even tried to commit suicide. And what got him through, he said, was a pen pal, which he happened to connect with through an ad in the Sacramento Bee. And they formed a friendship. And Jeff said that he really, got, his name was Scott, and he got him through this time. And the great thing is, which is so heartwarming, is that they still keep in touch today. And they wow. actually hung out in Sacramento just a couple months ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's a nice addition to the story. Now, what do you hope that audiences are taking away after after they watch your documentary? You know, my goal originally was to just shed awareness uh, on this cause because I think a lot of people who aren't uh, personally impacted by this cause don't really think about it as something that's, um, you know, important and a cause we need to get behind. But the Innocence Project estimates that there's about two and a half to five percent of prisoners in the U.S. that are wrongfully convicted. And so that's over 120,000 people. This is a lot of people. And I just don't think this causes on people's radar. And I wanted to raise awareness for that. Um, now, since the film has come out and it has you know been received really well, I really hope to work on a film in the future about some who's currently incarcerated so that I can either amplify their voice so they can share their side of the story or even just um, or ideally discover new facts in their case and help them in any way that we can. Well I think it's great that you're helping spread the awareness and that people are taking notice and you mentioned what you want to do next um, as far as maybe with another case but what are you currently working on? Are there plans for a follow-up? Yes. So the con conviction, the documentary on Amazon Prime is a short. It's just 21 minutes long. I am just in the final post-production stages of the feature length film of Jeff's story. And so as the short really talks about Jeff's personal struggles and how he reintegrated into society, the feature length doc goes much deeper into the American criminal justice system. You know, what went wrong? There was DNA in Jeff's case that wasn't allowed to be tested. And so, you know, why does that happen? And the psychologist 
psychology of why somebody would confess to a crime they didn't commit. So we go a lot deeper into the details of what really happened to, you know, create this unfortunate situation. And I know these type of documentaries, they do get a lot of attention. Um, any documentaries in particular that you really enjoyed that maybe other people should watch if they like this type of subject matter? Well, the one that I really love, um, which most of the world seems to love, is Making a Murderer. It was such that. a compelling document. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah, yeah, it was very interesting. <laughs> um, so interesting. And also the filmmakers followed uh, Stephen Avery's case for 10 years. So just that in and of itself is so fascinating to me, the amount of time they dedicated to his story. Um, and another one that uh, I'm not going to give away the ending because I don't want to give away any spoilers, <laughs> but The Jinx is so great. And I think the thing that makes that film is the, or that docuseries is the final scene is the very end. Uh, it's really, it's really shocking. <laughs> I won't say what it is. Okay, <laughs> I, I guess we'll have to tune in to see it. And I know Gia, you were here in Northern California in the Bay Area, and then you moved to New York and that kind of started this whole path for you to do filmmaking. Yes, I did. I lived in the Bay Area for 10 years um, and I loved it there. And it's my fa my husband's favorite place and New York is my favorite place. So we kind of compromised and lived there for 10 years and then we moved to New York. And I'm so glad I did because that's where I ended up attending New York Film Academy. That's how I got into filmmaking and, you know, the, the rest you know about. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, I love your story and I want to watch it now. So I'll tell our audience that you can learn more about conviction online by visiting geowartz.com.